Have you ever wondered how a world war begins? Well, it's not as simple as one event, one moment. The origins of World War I can be traced back to a complex web of political, economic and diplomatic tensions. The early 20th century was a time of great change, and these changes set the world on a path to war. There was a system of alliances that tied nations together, promising mutual defence and creating a tangled web of obligations. Militarism was on the rise, with nations building up their armies and navies, creating an arms race that only heightened tensions. Imperialism also played a role. Nations competing for colonies and resources around the globe led to rivalries and resentment. Nationalism, the belief in the superiority of one's own nation, added fuel to the fire. The Great War was marked by battles that claimed millions of lives. Notable among these was the Battle of the Somme, where over a million men were wounded or killed. This battle was significant for its strategic importance, as it was intended to relieve the French forces at Verdun and push back the German lines. Speaking of Verdun, it was one of the longest battles of the war, lasting over nine months. It was a testament to the human cost of war, with an estimated three quarters of a million casualties on both sides. The battle's outcome had a profound impact on French morale and showcased the horrors of trench warfare. Then there was the Second Battle of Ypres, notable for its use of poison gas by the Germans, a grim harbinger of the chemical warfare that would come to characterize much of the 20th century these battles changed the course of the war and history itself. War is the mother of invention, but at what cost? World War I, the first global war of the 20th century, brought about a wave of technological innovations unimaginable in previous conflicts. The grim reality of trench warfare, a strategic but deadly method of combat, became the norm. Soldiers lived, fought and often died in these muddy, rat-infested trenches a stark contrast to the romanticized image of war. Then, there were the chemical weapons, a true horror of the Great War. Gases like mustard and chlorine were used to devastating effect, causing unimaginable suffering and death. On a more progressive note, tanks introduced a new dimension to ground warfare, offering protection and firepower on the move. And let's not forget the skies. Aerial combat, once the stuff of dreams, became a terrifying reality with planes used for reconnaissance, bombing runs and dogfights, innovation came with a high price, forever altering the face of warfare. While soldiers fought on the front lines, a different battle was taking place at home. As the guns roared, the home front became a crucial theater of the war. With men away in the trenches, women stepped into roles previously considered masculine domains. From working in factories producing ammunition, to serving as nurses on the battlefield, women's contributions were pivotal in sustaining the war effort. Meanwhile, propaganda became a powerful tool in shaping public opinion. Governments utilised posters, films and newspapers to stir national pride, encourage enlistment and demonise the enemy. The message was clear, everyone had a part to play in this total war. And total war it was. National economies and resources were fully mobilised to support the war effort. From rationing food to redirecting industry, the entire society was engaged in the conflict. The war was not just fought on the battlefields, it permeated every aspect of life. The war front was not the only place where the battle was fought. The ripples of World War I reached far beyond the borders of Europe. This war, this Great War, was not confined to the trenches of the Western Front or the battlefields of Eastern Europe. Its impact was felt across the globe, from the sands of Africa to the vast expanses of Asia and the turbulent lands of the Middle East. As the war raged on, empires crumbled. The dissolution of these empires, many of which had held power for centuries, sent shockwaves throughout the world. In the aftermath, new nations were born. Nationalist movements sprang up, fueled by the desire for self-determination and independence. In Africa, the map was redrawn. Colonial powers, bolstered by their victory in the war, claimed vast territories carving up the continent without regard for the people who lived there. These arbitrary borders, drawn in distant European capitals, sowed the seeds for conflicts that still smolder today. In Asia, the fall of empires created a power vacuum. Japan, having sided with the Allies, emerged as a major world power, expanding its influence across the Pacific. In the Middle East, 
The collapse of the Ottoman Empire led to the creation of new states, many under European control. This restructuring of power and territory laid the groundwork for decades of unrest and conflict. Amidst this upheaval, alliances shifted and changed. Nations that had once been enemies found common ground in their shared desire for stability and peace. But these alliances were often tenuous, their foundations built on the shifting sands of political expediency rather than mutual trust and respect. The Great War left a global legacy that continues to shape our world today. From the birth of new nations to the redrawing of borders, from the rise of nationalist movements to the shifting alliances, the impact of World War I is still evident. Its echoes can be heard in the conflicts that rage on today, in the tensions that simmer beneath the surface of international relations and in the collective memory of a world that has never forgotten the horror and the sacrifice of those four devastating years. In the aftermath of war comes the challenge of making peace. The Great War had ended, and the victors had to decide what to do next. One of the most significant outcomes was the Treaty of Versailles, signed in June 1919. It was more than just a peace agreement, it was a blueprint for a new world order. The treaty imposed heavy reparations on Germany, the perceived instigator of the conflict. The idea was to weaken Germany so that it could never wage war again. However, this punitive approach led to resentment and economic hardship, fueling the rise of extremist movements that would later plunge the world into another war. But the Treaty of Versailles was not just about punishment. It was also about redrawing the map of Europe. The boundaries of many countries changed and several new nations were born out of the ashes of empires. This reshaping of borders, though intended to reflect national identities, created new tensions and disputes that would simmer for years to come. The treaty also gave birth to the League of Nations, the forerunner to the United Nations. Its aim was to provide a forum for resolving international disputes and to prevent future wars. Despite its lofty goals, the League was hampered by the absence of the United States, whose Senate refused to ratify the treaty. It also lacked the power to enforce its decisions, a flaw that would ultimately lead to its downfall. The Treaty of Versailles was a landmark moment in world history. It marked the end of an old world order and the beginning of a new one. It was a bold, albeit flawed, attempt to create a more peaceful world. But its shortcomings would become painfully apparent in the years to come. Indeed, the Treaty of Versailles did not bring lasting peace. Its punitive measures and the redrawing of borders sowed the seeds of resentment and conflict. It was a peace treaty that paradoxically laid the groundwork for another world war. The Treaty of Versailles was meant to ensure peace, but instead it planted the seeds for another world war. History is our greatest teacher. With these words, we delve into the lessons we've gleaned from the ashes of World War I. A global conflict of unprecedented scale, it tore apart the fabric of nations and painted a grim picture of humanity's potential for destruction. The war revealed the failures of diplomacy, the intricate web of alliances designed to maintain a balance of power instead spiralled into a devastating chain reaction. This underlines the importance of clear, transparent negotiations and the risks of secret treaties. Today we strive for open dialogue between nations, a lesson learned from the clandestine dealings of the past. World War I also highlighted the dangers of unchecked nationalism. Fervent national pride, manipulated and stoked to fever pitch, played a crucial role in propelling nations into war. It's a stark reminder of the need for global understanding and respect for diversity to prevent blind patriotism from overshadowing our shared humanity. Beyond the battlefield, the war underscored the challenges of maintaining peace in an increasingly globalised world. In the war's aftermath, the League of Nations was established, a precursor to our modern United Nations. This was an early attempt at collective security, an acknowledgement that international cooperation was vital to prevent another global catastrophe. However, the League's inability to prevent World War II underlines the difficulty of maintaining global peace. It's a task that requires every nation's commitment to dialogue, compromise and cooperation. The pursuit of collective security remains a challenge in our current global landscape, with conflicts continuing to simmer around the world. In conclusion, World War I served as a harsh lesson in the consequences of diplomatic failure, unchecked nationalism and the complexities of sustaining peace. 
these lessons continue to resonate, prompting ongoing efforts to foster international cooperation and prevent future conflicts. World War I taught us hard lessons, but the question remains, have we learned from them 